there was a physician who had perceived a bad smell in his house. The doctor decided he would chop out a hole in the wall and get to the source of this unpleasant odor. And there he found two dead rats. And immediately, two members of the family got the plague. As Blue pondered the details of this case, he recalled reading a recent report from the British Plague Commission that confirmed the results of a study completed 10 years earlier. Pasteur Institute scientist Paul Louis Simon did this experiment. He put two rats in cages side by side, separated by a grate. They couldn't touch one another. One rat was healthy, one rat was sick with the plague. And Simon made the breakthrough observation that when the plague rat died, the fleas jumped to the side of the healthy rat for their next blood meal. Bubonic plague is transmitted by Yersinia pestis. The flea itself is really the host of Yersinia pestis. And when it seeks a blood meal on its natural host, it regurgitates its bacteria and transmits plague. And it's only when its own host dies, the flea seeks another warm body. A rat, or if a human comes by, they'll jump on. It sense that there's something warm here. I don't care what it is. And then they'll bite, they'll try to feed because it's hungry. So the cause of the transmission between rats and human was the flea. Blue was thunderstruck by the realization that fleas played the primary role in transmitting the disease. Rats, he now understood, were only agents of the epidemic because of the insects in their fur. And pieces fell into place. The peaks of the outbreak lined up with the fleas' active season. The baffling on-again, off-again pattern became crystal clear. So the bubonic plague bacilla was best conveyed by fleas on rats biting humans. That transmission was the most important thing, so the eradication of rats would be pretty significant.